there are hot dogs and hamburgers on his collar. Whiskers, you love grilling. For this week's Big Little Recipe, we are outside because we are going to be grilling. We are grilling some portobellas, which at first thought I was like boring, but with a few ingredient marinade that doubles as a sauce, these mushrooms quickly became my favorite thing to grill this summer. So our first step in the grilled portobellas is scraping out the gills. So I'm just using a regular soup spoon and lightly pulling them off. I like to get the majority of them because when you marinate and grill portobellas, if the gills are still hanging out, they can get like a little bit mushy, muddy, not like the most appetizing thing in the world. So I've gotten a majority of them, that's good. And now I'm just going to dunk this guy in water. And pat it dry. Perfect. Got any like little dirt specks there. And now we're gonna repeat with our other mushroom. So now that our mushrooms are all prepped, I am going to start on our marinade that doubles as our sauce. So the first ingredient is nutritional yeast. We're doing three tablespoons. So nutritional yeast is an ingredient you'll see in a lot of vegan recipes. It has this um, sort of cheesy flavor uh, and like a ton of umami. It makes the innate umami and the mushrooms go into like absolute overdrive. So this is like the foundation of our sauce. We are also going to be adding olive oil. You don't need to use the best olive oil here, just whatever one you like cooking with. So we're doing six tablespoons of olive oil, three tablespoons of nutritional yeast, and three tablespoons of caper brine. You could also use Cornish on brine. That is very delicious here. Let me know in the comments what kind of pickly situation is always in your fridge that you would wanna swap into this recipe. We're gonna be doing three tablespoons of brine. If a few capers fall in, that's totally okay. Two, three, great. So at first it is going to seem very liquidy, but as the nutritional yeast soaks up the oil and the vinegar, it is going to take on this emulsified, creamy texture that reminds me a lot of Dijon mustard. See, it's happening. Do you see it? Yeah, it's cool. Okay, and at this point, an eighth of a teaspoon of salt, or just do a little pinch, that's fine too. Great. So for a marinade, eighth of a teaspoon of salt seems quite low, but this caper, brine, vinegar situation, very, very salty. Same deal if you were doing cornichons or pretty much any pickle. So our marinade is all ready. At this point, we are going to take out three tablespoons of it. This is going to become our sauce for the sandwich. Whoops. Oh, it's so good. Okay. And three. It's like sort of three. Doesn't have to be perfect. This is not a science. Okay, so I have Three tablespoons reserved here. This is gonna come in handy soon. The rest of the marinade is going to be painted on our mushrooms. I'm just gonna pick up a guy and then just paint it all over. Tiny okay. little mushrooms. Yeah, I actually find this very soothing. Okay. And now we can just plop her down here. I'm gonna give the other side a good paint too. Now, if you wanna be an overachiever, what I've done a couple times with this is you can do a little poke with a fork, just in a few places to kind of help the marinade like sink in. And I'll slip it over. Now, I like to marinate these 
inside facing up because the inside of the pork bells kind of act like this little uh, bowl or dish where the marinade can like really hang out. So if you have surplus marinade, that's the place where it should go. So I'm gonna go stick these in the fridge. They are going to marinate anywhere from like four to 24 hours, whatever works with your schedule. And while they are hanging out and soaking up all that awesome flavor, we can finish up our sauce. So I have two teaspoons of like drained capers and I'm just going to mince them finely. Now, if you're doing cornichons, it would be about like four of these very, very tiny pickles. But if you're starting with a bigger pickle of some kind, just eyeball it. It's whatever makes a sauce that tastes delicious to you. So now I am mincing some chives. I love these because they have a, um, like an oniony savory flavor, but they're not so intense that it's unpleasant to eat raw. We're aiming for about three tablespoons minced. Again, it doesn't have to be perfect. It is just a very delicious sauce to go on a sandwich. And if it's a little short or a little over and that tastes better to you, that's great. So at this point, I'm gonna give it a little taste, see if I wanna adjust it in either direction. Do you wanna taste? Okay. It's really good. We will stick this in the fridge. That can hang out there while the mushrooms are marinating and then we'll be ready to grow. So, oh my God. <laughs> I can't see shit. Okay, do we have to move the grill? We can't because it's hot. So these are mushrooms that I marinated yesterday. They are all ready to cook. We have a grill on medium high. And I'm going to start them stem side facing up. This way, all that marinade can kind of sizzle and simmer in there. And they're gonna cook for like six minutes on the first side and then we'll flip them. So we flip these, they're gonna cook for another six-ish minutes until the edges start to get a little bit crispy and they're nice and tender throughout. So our mushrooms have these gorgeous little crispy edges and they feel nice and tender. I am going to let them rest for a couple minutes. This just kind of helps all the juices settle in. And while they're hanging out, I'm just going to lightly toast these challah buns that I have. If you don't want a toasted bun, don't toast it. So now we are all ready to assemble our sandwiches. I have my toasted buns. I am just going to spread sauce on the inside of each of them. This has so much awesome, intense flavor. We only needed a few ingredients to get there. All vegetarian, could easily be vegan depending on what kind of bun you use. For more recipes like this, make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel and I will see you next week.